High natural here with the drive wire, and this is the VW Atlas SEL4 Motion R line. And it is a big and boxy SUV that's mostly responsible for why SUVs get a bad rap. But it has huge amounts of capacity, a ton of room in the back for animals or for people or for cargo, for whatever you want to put in it. This one's got seven seats, but they can seat up to eight with a rear bench. And it's definitely a better alternative to a minivan, but it is a highly competitive area. And there's a bunch of other cars that are barking at its heels. So let's take a look and see what this car is actually up against. I want to put a quick comparison up on the screen to show you exactly the cars and their specifications so you can make a choice. So I've picked five different competitors to the VW Atlas. They are the Kia Telluride, which is basically the Hyundai Palisade, Honda Pilot, Subaru Ascent, Jeep Grand Cherokee, and the Toyota Highlander. They range in price from around $47,120 to $53,790. So you'll see that the Atlas wins a few categories because it is massive. Biggest capacity with the second row folded, all seats folded almost 100 cubic feet, and it has by far the best third row legroom. Now, the Kia Telluride does win on one of those, and that's the cargo capacity with the seats up. If you want a fast car, then choose the Honda Pilot. It has a 280 horsepower, 3.5 liter V6, do zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds. Reason it's that fast is because it weighs a couple hundred pounds less than the Atlas. Cheapest on the list is the Subaru Ascent. It's also got more torque, 277 foot pounds. Jeep Grand Cherokee comes in at around 52. It's got a 3.6 liter V6, 293 horsepower, but is the slowest by far because it weighs over 5,000 pounds. So eight seconds to 60. In fact, it's actually not that much slower than the Atlas, which gets there in 7.9. And the Highlander is also a pretty good vehicle as well. It's almost $50,000 in its limited form but it gets the best highway mileage of 27 and still scoots to 60 in 6.9 seconds. So look at the details, you make your choice. So this tester is an SEL4 Motion R line. It comes with these quite tasty 21 inch wheels shod with these Pirelli all season tires. So back in 2021, Volkswagen did update the face of the car. They made it a little bit, a little bit more aggressive. A little less boring, comes with these adaptive LED headlights in this specific trim. And then the R-Line gives you this blacked out section right here, a monstrous sized giant VW badge. So under the hood is a narrow angled V6, 3.6 liters in displacement. It used to be in the Golf VR6 many years ago, but that car didn't weigh 5,000 pounds. So it was quite a bit quicker than this one and it puts out 276 horsepower, 266 pound-feet of torque. It is naturally aspirated. There is an alternate engine, which is a four-cylinder turbo. It has 235 horsepower, about 258 foot-pounds of torque, so almost as much torque as this one. But this one's a nice engine. I think it works really well, especially when you've got the four-motion all-wheel drive to go with it. It's driven through an eight-speed conventional automatic transmission. And the downside to the V6 is fuel economy. It isn't great on fuel economy. It didn't come first in our, in our comparison earlier. Uh, I've been averaging around 14 or 15 and I've not been hot rodding it. So you might want to think about getting the turbo engine if you want to save a little gas. At today's prices, it might be worth it. So Volkswagen thought pretty hard about getting this car designed well inside. And it's a pretty good interior and a useful interior. So if you want to get in the back, you simply pull that seat forward. And once you're in the back, it's remarkably comfortable. Uh, anybody much taller than me wouldn't have a lot of headroom, but I got a couple of inches above my head. The seats are not sort of banana shaped. They're not pushing you forward. I like the way these headrests will push back down to stow when they're not being used. Uh, you've got a couple of cup holders here. You've got a little bit of a storage space. And then on that side, you get two USB-C's to plug stuff in. Now this seat is pushed a little bit forward, but it does go back a little bit. Shouldn't be a problem. And these are easy to put down as well if you wanna stow these down for more storage when you're carrying a bunch of stuff. But yeah, I'm actually quite surprised how comfortable these seats are. Second row passengers get a pretty good deal as well. And then you can recline back a little bit and 
have a pretty comfortable journey. There's plenty of leg room. I do have this seat all the way back. You've got control of your heated seats in the back here, flow of air, and then down at the bottom, you've got two more USB-Cs as well. And also, you get a couple of little blinds for when it gets too hot. Nicely thought out. You also get this panoramic sunroof, which isn't a great idea because the sun beams through this quite thin material. But other than that, this place is a pretty, pretty impressive place to be. And then the other thing is you also get an armrest each. And then there's a little thing at the bottom here where you can, if you wind it down or wind it back up, you can adjust how high the armrest is. Kind of a neat little touch. I like that. So at the back, this one comes with the towing hitch package right here under the bumper. You also get Atlas spelled out as they're doing these days uh, on the lid here. And then it's powered open to reveal approximately uh, 20 cubic feet of space right here. And then there is a spare tire under there. That's great. And some additional storage space on the left and the right. So what I like about this is very easy with these seats down. You simply push up this little lever right here. Bang, down it goes, down it goes. Then they lock into place. And this is about the flattest floor you'll see this side of a minivan. This is fantastic. Great for dog beds, great for storage, etc., etc. And then if you want even more space, you can put the front ones down. These are easy too. One, one little lever on the side goes flat. And the same on this side. And you get almost a hundred cubic feet of space. So obviously if you have the bench seat here, then this space right here is taken up by the rest of the seat. But this is great because you've got captain's chairs in this one and you've got all this storage space, some behind the back seat and a little bit right here. It's a very spacious car. And then putting it back together again, pretty much there. Same on this side. And then with these, they give you this little pull tab here. Simply pull it, it unlocks. Pull it, it unlocks. And then make sure they're locked in place. It's been very, very well thought out. So versus some of its competition, the VW is somewhat stark inside. It's not really the most luxurious place, despite the fact that this one is, is one off the very top level. Um, Atlas that you can buy. Of course, it has all the amenities. It's got electric seats, uh, cooled and heating. Same with the passenger seat. You don't miss that, but it is a little bit stark in the way it's been designed. Quality is great. A lot of the quality here is, is very solidly constructed. It seems like it would last for quite some time. Anything I really don't like is because I'm on the short side and the, uh, the cushions on the seat are very long. Maybe they're built for tall Germans. They're not the best for me. So the Atlas has the MIB infotainment system, but it does have physical buttons to back it up, which is just great considering that the Golf R, the GTI, and the ID4 do not. They have the horrible capacitive touch button system. So the screen is super easy to use. Um, you've got radio, telephone, nav, all your different systems. You can scroll through. It's decently fast. And use your physical volume button. You can go through and click on these to get similar menus, same thing on the right hand side. You can go into the car menu. You can look at off-road information. You can change the settings in here for your lights, parking, tires, mirrors, ambient lighting, etc. It just works and it works great. The other part that works great, physical buttons for the HVAC. Now this particular model being a R-Line Premium SEL, it has both heated and cool seats. Now, one of my complaints for previous Atlases and other VWs has been some of the middle models, not necessarily the base model where I don't expect cooled seats, but the middle models where you're spending a little bit more money do not have cooled seats. These are actually cooled. Um, as I said, these are the vegan leather. They're perfectly fine. They just get hot unless you have cooled seats in hotter climates. And everything is super easy to adjust. Down here, you've got a Wi-Fi charger. It's been a little bit intermittent with um, my phone, even when I take the case off. So you do have a backup uh, of two uh, USB-Cs. There are USB-Cs throughout, which is kind of a pain because when I went on a road trip, I only had the old style ones. I had to buy a new one. You also get a little 12 volt here 
regular shifter, none of these weird little things right here. Two decent sized cup holders, you've got your park assist buttons here, your parking brake, engine start, stop, and then this is your mode where you can go in. Once you click on the button, you're able to access eco, normal, sport, and custom. And then you can adjust custom only when you're not driving. Uh, steering normal, ACC, light assist, etc., etc. You can change all those as you go along. Uh, the one that's been actually best for me, Sport's actually fine. The suspension remains pretty comfortable. I've sort of toggled back and forth between Sport uh, and, and the normal modes, and it works great. And there's also uh, this mode for off-road, so you can go ahead and you can check, you know, how uh, far above sea level you are. Got a compass and you've got uh, some temperature gauges as well, just in case. Now, if you toggle over here, you go to the off road mode, it's an automatic mode, or you can go into custom mode where you can adjust uh, again the same thing steering, drive turn, etc. You can't go crazy with this car, it's only got eight inches of, of ground clearance. And then the final one over to the left is snow mode, doesn't really happen too often here. In San Diego but it's super easy to use so here in the center console here you get quite a large storage bin with more power very generous with their storage bins it's carpeted at the bottom so things don't rattle around too much it's pretty good I mean this car is pretty damn huge inside directly ahead of the driver you get the digital cockpit that VW offers it's not quite as good uh, as say the Audi one for instance, but you can scroll through here and you can change a whole bunch of different stuff. Speed, road sign, oil temperature, trip, economy, overview, range, etc. I'll leave it on range. Pretty thirsty beast. I've averaged about 15 miles to the gallon. It's a V6. What do you expect? You can also scroll across and you can change your assist systems, your navigation, music playing, connect cell phone, etc. I usually go back to range. You can also change the view by minimizing some of the dials. Press it again. Apparently my range, my fuel economy is only 14. I lied. And then back to the dials that you were using before. This one comes with a heated steering wheel. And what I like about it is it's not too big. They do sort of chop off the bottom here to suggest the R line factor. But it's a nice small steering wheel, not a huge great hoop like a lot of them are. And this one also comes standard with the Fender sound system. It's pretty decent. I don't know if I would necessarily go for it. Obviously this car stickers at around 54,000. As I mentioned earlier before, the competition has sort of got that beat. But if you want space and not as much pace, then this might be the one to go for. So let's take it for a drive. And because we're on a little off-road section, we are going to stay on an off-road section because it has a controller right here that says mountains. So we're in driving mode, off-road, automatic, which means we can get it a little bit dirty. So they have made the, the suspension relatively soft. Even if you put it in sport mode, it's, it's, it's quite soft, and then you get the beeps and noises if you get too close to bushes and things that are out in the wild. Ground clearance, again, as I mentioned, is only eight inches, so you're not gonna tackle much in the way of rutted roads. All right, so when it's in this particular mode, and you start going down a hill, as I just did, it activates the hill descent control and controls your speed down that hill, which is kind of cool. No extra buttons to press, it just does it. So we're on some rough, rough sort of pavement, which turns into DG, and it's pretty rough sort of DG, but fairly flat. Let's see how the suspension soaks up some of these truck trails and let you know if you're good to go to go out into the wilds for a, pic a picnic a bit crashy through there. I got a feeling that it is not gonna be anywhere close to being as smooth as the Dodge Ram 1500 with air suspension was, but I never thought it would be. So this is pretty much washboard. Um, it's handling like I would expect it to handle. Quite lumpy. So it's quite an easy car to drive though. It's got quite light steering, even in sport mode. And the suspension is sort of trying its best to soak this up. 
not doing the best job in the world, but it's enough. And this is a particularly nasty piece of road, so we'll forgive it for that. And it does, it does smooth out a little bit further on. It doesn't feel too big when you drive it. It does definitely feel wide. It's, it's a quite a wide vehicle. Um, it definitely uh, isn't too long because it fits in my garage, unlike some cars, but it is actually genuinely nice to drive. I just wish they offered a, uh, a, an engine with a little bit more power, you know, something with a, a turbo, perhaps, you know, not the four, or give us the four and, and, and up the power of the, of the four in this car, because this VR6 is just not enough to pull 5,000 pounds. I would imagine that most people that buy this car do not care about hot rodding do not care about zero to 60, but some of the other options out there, like the Honda Pilot, does that in 6.2 seconds. Now that is, you know, that's pretty decent. Even the Ascent is, uh, is quicker than this, but none of them are the size of a cave, which this is. So yeah, even on this stuff, it's definitely Germanically firm, um, but the seats are really comfortable. They're soft enough to, to, to soak up most of the most of the bumps, and I think it's doing a pretty good job. Now we'll get to some regular pavement and see what it's like on regular pavement in a few minutes. But I just wanted to see what it was like on a a fairly heavily washboard surface, and uh, so far so good. Now you got to remember it is riding on 21-inch rims, so. Uh, standard cars have 18 inch rims, bigger sidewall means a little bit more comfort, but I doubt that any owner would be likely to put any kind of all-terrain tires on this kind of vehicle. But you know what, even with 21s on, it's not doing a bad job. It handles the turns pretty well, uh, it's going to want to understeer, um, that's, just, that's just the way it is. It's Volkswagen's four motion system, so it's not a real all wheel drive system. It just transfers power to the rear whenever it needs it. Most of the time it's a, it's a, front, a front driver. So we're on pavement now. I put it back into road mode and it's definitely a lot quieter. Stick your foot down. You can hear that in VR6. It's a great engine. It really is a great engine. It's just, I mean, it's having a hard time pulling this amount of weight around. The brakes are pretty solid too, you got to step on them uh, quite a bit to get this mass to come down from higher speeds. Again, 0 to 60 is going to take quite a slow 7.9 to 8 seconds, but the body control is actually very good for such a big car. I don't feel it rolling in the turns too much. Now, the captain's chairs will cost you an extra $600, I believe. Um, I'd go for those every time because this one actually is one of the easiest to access the third row that I've come across. Uh, usually you've got to be a contortionist to get in the back and then they're not comfortable seats. So I props to this car. This is, this is a very, it's very comfortable in the back. I could, I could definitely stay in the back for a while. Not a very long time, but more than most other cars. And none of the others have even close to the legroom. This has like 33.7 inches of legroom, which is like a full two, two and a half inches more than, than the next rival. So it's impressive uh, for, for, for space. All right, full bore from takeoff here. Sixty. See, it's not fast. not fast at all. Well, what do we think? It's a good car. It really is. But for me, I'd want something, if I had to have a three row, I'd have to have something a little quicker than this. I think the, the Honda might be the way to go. But having said that, if you want an enormous amount of room and you don't want a hot rod, you don't need something that drives, you know, fast, but does handle well, it's smooth, it's got plenty of power for what you need. I would suggest taking a look at this one, but there are a lot of options out there. 
If you're spending forty-five to fifty thousand dollars on a car, this is definitely one that you should consider at least. I like it. I've enjoyed driving it. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and we will catch you next time with another video.